Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be at JuliaCon. Uh, welcome to the presentation of um, Airflow GMSH. Yeah, my name is uh, Carlo Brunelli. I work as a researcher at the Royal Military Academy. I also come from Belgium. And I'm here today uh, to show you how to use this package and which are his feature. I started developing this um, quite simple and small package because I'm um, dealing constantly with airfoil and as may suppose also other researchers and engineers are dealing with airfoil and meshes and it's a, it's a tedious um, sequence of operation to create a, a mesh for, for an airfoil and that you have to repeat over and over. For who doesn't know, uh, GMSH is a free uh, open source software for uh, mesh creation and it can uh, read uh, G, uh, geo file and uh, the aim of the package is to create the geo file that can be read directly into, into GMSH and this is, for example, um, a geo file which has been read, which has been created using uh, Airfoil, uh, the package, Airfoil GMSH. This is the geo file which is read and in GMSH we can see a domain like this. At the center we have our airfoil and a typical domain for studying airfoil in free flow conditions and uh, the creation of a structured mesh, it's a mere click here on the left and we can see that we have a fully um, um, we have we have a mesh a 2d mesh which is uh, fully parameterized so it means that on the panel here on the left i organize the geo file in order to make the mesh fully parametric so for example we can modify the angle of attack and here the airfoil rotates and we can uh, immediately recreate a new mesh it's also possible to change the whole uh, domain dimension for example on the back we can extend or uh, reduce uh, the front or the back of our domain and remesh again. Or also all the divisions inside the domain, um, uh, the, the, for example, at the top part of the airfoil, we can uh, reduce the number of division and remesh immediately. So you can see that it's really um, easy uh, to use. And yeah, that was the the demo that I want to show you. Let's go back to the presentation. So the package has been realized to automatize uh, the, um, to, uh, to have an automatization of the creation of structured meshes. And you will see that it's possible to, in few lines of Julia code, to create a geo file to be read in uh, Airfoil GMSH. It avoids a uh, routine operation. It has been decided to create a geo file instead of a classic uh, .msh file because it's much more human readable and for a quite uh, expert user, it's also easier to have a custom modification of it. Uh, the features which are currently uh, implemented, um, it's possible to create uh, a quadrangular or a triangular um, um, mesh, uh, element meshes. Uh, it automatically recognizes if the um, trailing edge is uh, sharp or uh, not sharp and the mesh is created um, as a consequence. It's possible to create also a 3D mesh and with a simple command and this is a geo file with a 3D mesh and it's created pretty fast. Um, all over all the boundaries, inlet, outlet, uh, over the airfoil and the limits are automatically added the tag. So once you export the mesh and you, re and you import the mesh in your uh, code, uh, finite, uh, finite element code or finite volume, they are automatically recognized. It's possible to uh, create an airfoil directly uh, browsing on airfoiltools.com, which is a database containing tons of airfoils. You can just copy paste the URL and you immediately can have the, your airfoil. It supports a boundary layer analysis for your viscous simulation and there is also the support for class shape transformation. Here uh, is just, a, um, there are a couple of examples on how you can use the package. It's a registered package and um, so you call uh, Airfoil GMSH. You can copy uh, the URL uh, obtained surfing on uh, Airfoil tools and you can create a CSV file uh, with, uh, with the function here uh, from URL to CSV. And using uh, this uh, CSV or uh, another CSV that has been provided, for example, 
from uh, um, uh, optimization simulation or some other study, you can create uh, the geo file in basically just one line. The option uh, that you can set, uh, you can choose to create a 2D or a 3D mesh, the type of the element, and the user can also specify their uh, Reynolds number. If the Reynolds number is specified, then it's triggered a, a boundary layer analysis um, where uh, there are some empirical formulas and the code is going to, uh, is um, estimating the total uh, boundary layer thickness and also uh, the maximum height of the first uh, of the first layer to capture all the flow features uh, around uh, around the airflow there is a, a small uh, optimization optimization process and cycle um, where uh, the code is uh, looking for having at least 30 cells inside the boundary layer and a growth ratio between 1.1 and also 1.2. Uh, finally, uh, it has been added also the support to class shape transformation, which are a mathematical means and formulation which can, are used to describe uh, airfoils. Sometimes uh, they are defined in a not enough uh, number of points, so they are they, are, they have a low resolution, and so we want to increase the resolution of the, of the airfoil. In fact, if we use uh, not enough points for creating our mesh, it can, we can also obtain a uh, not really well-defined mesh, a low res um, coarse mesh, on, not really suitable for our cases. So we can have um, better, um, uh, an airfoil which is better resolved with a better resolution using a class shape transformation. So in this case, we load our CSV file where there are not enough points. We can say, for example, in this case, that we want our airfoil to be, to be defined over 500 points, and we can have um, a, better, a better airfoil and hopefully also a, a better mesh. So in conclusion, here there is just a sum up of the workflow that I suggest you to follow if you want to, to use and uh, try this package. I hope this can save you some time if you are working uh, with Airflow as I do, and thanks for your attention. Can you maybe say one or two words about your like larger flow from like oh, no, picking an airfoil to how you simulate it in practice? Sort of sh short example how the whole flow of using this works in a larger. Uh, for example, for for my studies, I'm uh, trying to testing. I have to test uh, different airfoils to find which are the most suitable for our flow condition. For example, I'm studying a low Reynolds airfoil, so I had to test different uh, uh, airfoils. So it was a a tedious routine to me every time to uh, look at uh, a new airfoil, uh, creating the, the whole domain and so on. And this, for me, speeded up the procedure. And once I have the, the, the mesh that, for me, it's fine from GMSH, I can just export the MSH file. And I'm developing a finite um, element, um, a solver uh, using finite element method, and which is using a library called GridUp, which is completely written in Julia. And I've, I'm implementing a um, variational multiscale method to solve these kind of flows. But probably this will be the talk for next year. <laughs>